China will build an airport in Antarctica, why does Australia object? What is the significance of the Antarctic airport? Let's take a closer look in this video. Antarctica is one of the seven continents of the Earth, and here is the continent with the highest average altitude in the world. Its total area has reached 14.245 million square kilometers, of which the mainland area accounts for 12.393 million square kilometers and the island area is 76,000 square kilometers. Since the discovery of Antarctica, various countries have had a very strong interest in it. Even if the environment here is not suitable for human survival, some people will still come to explore. Moreover, many countries have further plans for Antarctica, among which China plans to build an airport in Antarctica. But after this news appeared, Australia couldn't sit still. Not only do they want to block China, they even say that Antarctica belongs to them. Where does Australia get its confidence? Why does China want to build an airport in a barren land like Antarctica? Prior to this, Russia, the United States, Australia and other countries have built dozens of large and small airports in Antarctica, and Australia is the most active among them. At present, the largest airport in Antarctica is Australia's Wilkins Airport, which has a runway of 4,000 meters. In addition to taking off and landing large military transport aircraft, such as IL-76 and C-17, these airports also have the ability to take off and land large civil aviation airliners. Prior to this, China did not have its own Antarctic fleet, and could only take off and land at Russian airports, and each time required lengthy negotiations, which undoubtedly greatly affected the efficiency of aircraft use. Not only that, China has already built four scientific research stations in Antarctica, and there is another one under construction. However, due to the long-term lack of airports for fixed-wing aircraft to take off and land, China's expedition activities in Antarctica have been restricted to a certain extent. It can be seen that the construction of an airport belonging to China is imperative. Recently, the 35th batch of China's expedition team took the Xuelong to Antarctica for scientific research missions. Among them, the most important task is to study how to build China's first Antarctic permanent airport. It is reported that the address of the airport has been selected on the ice sheet 28 kilometers away from Zhongshan Station, China's Antarctic Scientific Research Station. The most important thing in this trip is to study the construction of China's first permanent airport in Antarctica. The address was chosen at the China Antarctic Research Station on the ice sheet 28 kilometers away from Zhongshan Station. It is planned to build a runway with a length of 1,500 meters and a width of about 80 meters to meet the takeoff and landing needs of large and medium-sized transport aircraft. As for why the airport should be built, there are mainly the following reasons. First, with the airport, the remote sensing equipment on the plane can be used to expand the scope of China's field expeditions in Antarctica. Second, China's polar scientific research stations, which have always lacked the ability to take off and land transport aircraft, can only rely on scientific research ships when they want to resupply. However, the replenishment efficiency of the scientific research ship is very low. With the transport aircraft, the material support capability can be greatly improved and the stay time of Chinese scientific research personnel in Antarctica can be extended. Third, with the airport, we can dispatch planes to deal with emergencies in a timely manner and can provide scientific research personnel with the best medical protection in the shortest possible time. But with a plan, it is not so easy to build an airport that meets the expected goals. 
China also encountered many difficulties during the construction process. One of the most difficult problems faced in the airport construction project was how to clear the ice, which is about 10 meters thick, and create an area suitable for aircraft takeoff and landing. You must know that the natural environment in Antarctica is very harsh, and all kinds of large-scale machinery and equipment in China cannot enter. Therefore, China can only use manpower to compact the snow tens of meters thick, and then use simple infrastructure equipment to process it. Turning this snow into tiny particles with friction can only make it suitable for building airports. It is estimated that after the completion of the airport, it will not only be able to take off China's large Snow Eagle 601 transport aircraft, but also be of great significance to the follow-up expedition to Antarctica. Generally speaking, the Antarctic airport will solve the problems of material supply and emergency rescue, and the problems of Chinese materials and aircraft landing will also be solved in the future. Moreover, the airport is built according to world-class super-class standards, so even a transport aircraft such as the Y-20 can land safely. After all, the strength of China's infrastructure is obvious in the world. As the world's second largest economy, as long as China has the technology, capital, and determination, there is nothing it cannot do. However, when the news of China's establishment of a permanent airport in Antarctica spread all over the world, a clown stood up and crazily accused China, that is Australia. When Australia learned that China was going to build an airport in Antarctica, it not only stated that China had occupied its territory, but also asked China not to set foot on Australia's Antarctic land. This is confusing. Doesn't the internationally recognized Antarctic Treaty count? Why does Australia claim Antarctica as its territory? Is it because Australia is closer to Antarctica? It is really because of this reason. At the beginning, Australia felt that Antarctica was at its doorstep, so Australia unilaterally declared that 42% of the land in Antarctica belonged to Australia, and no one else could move it. Of course, this is just the fantasy of the Australians, and other countries have never paid attention to them. In fact, Antarctica and the high seas belong to all mankind. As long as it has the ability and funds, any country can build an airport here. But if you insist on linking these two things, then China's permanent airport plan does have something to do with Australia. According to reports, the site selected for China's Antarctic Airport project is the site selected for Australia's Davis Airport. The Australian side thinks this is their territory, but the Chinese side took the first step to occupy the place where they built the airport, so they are very unhappy. But in the end, it's not China's fault. Although the Australian side expressed its intention to build an airport as early as 1957, there is not even a single signal light. So this can only be blamed on Australia's lack of funds, technology and capabilities. Airports would be celebrating their 60th anniversary by now if they were capable, but until now, there has been no sign of any work on Davis Airport in Australia. This cannot be blamed on China's idea of building this site. After all, there are not many places in Antarctica that are suitable for building an airport, and Australia still occupies the place and does not do anything. From the standpoint of international law, China's construction of an airport in Antarctica has nothing to do with Australia, and China does not need to seek their opinions. Even if the Australian side obstructs in every possible way in reality, it is meaningless and futile. Apart from humiliating itself, the Australian side has no way to hinder China's infrastructure construction. 
How, where, and when to build is China's freedom, and it is inevitable for China to build an airport in Antarctica. Antarctica is the last piece of a virgin land on the Earth. 98% of the land is covered by thick glaciers, which are precious fresh water resources. Based on the current human population, the fresh water in Antarctica can be used by us for more than 7,000 years, and this is without considering the cycle. With the in-depth scientific research of Antarctica by countries around the world, it is found that it is far from being covered with ice and snow, and it contains rich resources that we cannot imagine. Antarctica has proven more than 200 kinds of mineral deposits, including precious oil, gas, coal mines, and various metals. Scientists have even discovered that the basin in the sea around its continental shelf, once drilled, is a steady stream of oil and natural gas. For human beings whose resources are increasingly depleted, Antarctica is a rare a treasure land, and its strategic importance is self-evident. Therefore, of course Australia has to declare its sovereignty in a hurry, and jump up and down to prevent China from building an airport in order to maintain its status as a transit station. However, their ideas and practices are extremely naive, and it is impossible to monopolize Antarctica. According to China's current economic strength, it is inevitable to build an airport in Antarctica. Once China's permanent airport is completed, a larger-scale scientific research station can be established locally, and at the same time, China's domestic supply of scientific research stations can be strengthened. In the past few decades, China has failed to seize the opportunity in the two poles, and this time it must not miss the opportunity. As a major country in Antarctic scientific research, the construction of the new airport is of extraordinary significance to China. It not only guarantees China's strategic and scientific research needs in the Antarctic region, but also will win China the right to speak in the future airspace management of the Antarctic region. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.